Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Gary Spain as always and we're joined by a special guest today, Declan Fabio O'Brien. Declan, how are you keeping? Yeah, good, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Um, always good to chat with you. Absolutely. Well, listen, we have you on. I know you're 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 a close contact of Kieran Lucid, who's involved with the All Ireland League. But I just kind of wanted to get you on, get your thoughts about it. it's gathering pace now at the minute. So, uh, like, what is it that makes the All Ireland League so great, in your opinion? Well, I suppose a couple of things. I think where we're at as a league, we're in a sort of precarious position at the minute with uh, financials and, and and everything else going on in the background. I think we're almost looking for something. To jump out with us, I think Caron's plan looks looks to be the best plan I've seen about. I think um, no one else has been as innovative as him. I don't think when it comes to, you know, making the league exciting again, making it, you know, making the fans come to games, making it be more enticing to get involved in, in um, you know, a really sort of, you know, new new sort of structure. Well, similar to Satanta Cup, but you know, much more on the line, and 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 I suppose um, I, I think it would definitely capture the fans' imagination. Certainly my imagination has been and I think it's something that that even aside from being a friend of Kieran's, I think it's certainly the best plan I've seen for the league and, and going forward to um to make it something special and a bit of magic again in the league and have fans and, and the rivalry again probably and I, I think um yeah, it'd be it'd be a huge boost I think for the for the country in general and um I'm I'm all for it for for for, for certain. Well I think at the moment like I, we touched on it off air it's just there is like obviously we got a bit of a boost with the streaming service and we'll chat to you about that later on but there was so much uncertainty regarding the league so much like you know will there even be a season to be finished off with now so I think this is kind of coming at a good time and all the clubs seem to be on board with it uh, well this side of the border yeah I think it's a real majority push now I think for this you know the people have spoken the players have spoken, the clubs have spoken, and you know that's a, that's a huge indicator now of of where where we want to go and what uh, direction we want to take. And um, Kieran, in fairness to him, has been quiet of late. He's put all his cards on the table, and now what you see is the clubs are doing the talking, and that's exactly what what we would want, and that's exactly I'm sure what he would want is that you know he he left the plan there. It's the best plan for me. You know, no, nobody else is knocking down, pulling up trees. You know, and and giving other plans and other options. So I think certainly, at the moment, from where the league is is at, you know, as you just said there, Paul rightly, I didn't know if there would be a league. I was actually thinking we were we were in that dire straits that then we be football again. It was really really uncertain and bleak, and uh, worrying, very worrying for uh, players, the league livelihoods, everything else that goes with um, the passion of the league as well, which we all love to go on a Friday and Saturday nights and and everything else. So um, yeah, I, I just think the clubs have spoken now, and now let's see can we can we put this in, in, into action? Yeah, Gary, are, you, are, you de- sorry, are you delighted that all ten SSE Electricity League Premier Division clubs have supported it, and ten of the twelve uh, Danske Bank Irish League clubs as well? Th- that's some level of support. Yeah, I mean. As I said, it's a majority there, and it's a real push. And I think the two clubs in the north, are, you know, you know, I don't think they've come out with state official statements yet. But I think Cliftonville and Ungan maybe are the two teams. And you know, I'm sure with um, with some more um, information and, and everything else, I'm sure they'll come around as well. Because if the other ten are pushing for it, I'm sure there's good reason financially for them pushing for that. So. Uh, and then that that um that concerns them as well. So you know, at the end of the day, it's all about a club getting something back out of this. And if ten are voting for it, I'm sure there's there's something in the pot for the other two as well. And I'm sure they'll come around. Do you think the the FAI now and the IFA have will will maybe have no choice but to get behind it, given almost all the member clubs for both associations are are, are fully backing it? Yeah, I think it's it's you know. It's, Really, a gun to head scenario, I think, um, and uh, and that's sort of where we're at at the minute, is because nobody else seems to know where to go. We, you know, the streaming service is a huge boost at the minute, but it's still not enough. It's not enough to, to sustain what we what we're looking for. You know, what we want in this country, in the island, is a small, healthy European league, and this is what the All Island League um, offers. And you know, we're not looking for a huge. You know, we're not looking to be 
you know, a German Bundesliga. You know, I'll give you an option. I'll give you an example of the, the Danish Super League, who Hyper Hypercube, the Dutch consulting company who's involved in here, have 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 been involved in. You know, they've only a, a one million population, maybe Denmark, and um, I think their revenue are they're bringing in fifty million a year through um through money through 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 the league. So I think we're not looking for that straight away, but that's that's the potential for a one million population. I mean, we've we've four times that here, so I'm sure we can get something something similar. Yeah, uh, Gary, like you've been traveling up and down to games um, up in Northern Ireland, and obviously in in our own league. But what what's your take on it? Yeah, so I mean, it's a bit of a strange one. I, I think currently the Irish league is a little bit behind the the SSE Electricity League, but historically it probably was ahead. Um, but probably for the last twenty years, our league has gone ahead. But and I think that's been even seen in things like this, the Satanta Cup. But you take clubs like Linfield and Glentoran up north, and they're absolutely massive clubs. And potentially, Linfield are the biggest club on the island. I, I don't. I, I may be insulting Shamrock Rovers fans, but they're certainly by far the biggest club in, in the the Irish League. And I, I think those clubs would benefit hugely from just a, a bigger bigger exposure, bigger hype, I, I think a TV deal is absolutely crucial. Uh, I think that's what the league and the clubs on this island need, is just just more hype and, and just make the games bigger games. And I think something like Linfield v Shamrock Rovers, Glen Torn v Dundalk, etc., those kind of games would, would attract the fans and uh, hopefully the TV audiences as well. Yeah, well, exactly, Gary. That's what we want to do. We want to capture people's imagination again, which has diminished over the last couple of years. I think, you know, barring the big games, your Rovers, Bowls, and, you know, your dar- couple of derbies that we have, of, of, you know, we get behind. I think we had 7,000, I think, in the Rovers, uh, Bowls game there last last year, which was fantastic. But um, for playing in both leagues, you know, the facilities are much better in general up north. You know, you've got Glen Torren, good stadium, the Oval, you've got Linfield, Windsor Park. You've got um, Cliftonville, decent ground, uh, you know, all weather surface. You've got uh, Crusaders, another lovely ground. So you know, I could go on and on. All these grounds are far superior to the, to the grounds in, in the League of Ireland. They may not be doing as well in Europe, but with the right push and the right revenue and the right TV and everything else coming in with this um, all Ireland League and everything else that, that comes from, uh, you know, a more, I suppose, attractive league, they, they will probably prosper quicker than us because of they've already facilities are already probably a little bit better in in them grounds you know we've still a lot of catching up to do for our top few teams here and i think um they, they certainly um they, they're in better shape at the moment if, if you really you know go to games up there and you you, you understand that the, particularly i keep harping on about the facilities but that's a huge huge factor in, in getting people in the grounds and, and getting families going to games and etc yeah, I agree. Uh, well, I think we've actually got some great grounds here as well, like Turner's Cross. You mentioned Tala, obviously. Uh, Turner's Cross and Terryland, uh, even DC Park in Galway. Although they may not be in the, in Galway's case, they may not be in the All Ireland yeah. League. Um, mm. yeah, uh, one of the things you touched on is Europe, and I think one of the key things the proposal and, and my belief is why the clubs have got behind it is it now proposes to keep all the European places for the two leagues because Europe is just so crucial. Uh, the Irish League had actually have lost a place for this season, but they've got it back. I know they've already got it back for 2021. Um, mm. But the proposal is to keep all eight, hopefully eight going forward, four for each league, um, to keep all yeah. eight. And I think that's crucial for the clubs. Um, but how, how do you think that, that'll work with if a team... Let's say I pick Crusaders off the top of my head. If they were to finish, let's say, eighth or ninth in the All Island League, that they'd still get into Europe based on their domestic standing, and possibly a, a, an SSE or Tristy League club who finish ahead of them would actually miss out in Europe. How do you think that would go down? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, like mostly new, new sort of ideas. Well, the things are complicated, and the European spots are a little bit complicated at the minute. You know. When we break down after the, the round, fourth round of games, and you, you've got your your golden golden sort of playoff between both leagues, 
it is it does get a bit and I do think there is a few uncertainties and a few things to be ironed out because there's you know, when it gets so technical, I think I don't think that's that's uh, all transparent at the minute. And there they are of course there's gonna be a few concerns about stuff like that. But um certainly this plan offers you know, a way forward you know, usually attractive for for if we keep all the European places. But there is some technical technical stuff to be ironed out with the likes of that. If it comes down to, you know, domestic points being tallied onto the, the playoff, um, King of the Island playoffs um, in the end. So it it is a little bit ahead. There's a bit of uncertainty and a bit of a grey area in there. So there are things that I'm sure Caron will um, if if it's given the green light, he's going to have to iron out those um, few few uh, issues. Do you think UEFA will agree to that and accept that? Well, UEFA have to agree to it, and, and that's, the, that's the thing. Kieran will have to go. You know, Hypercube are, are used to dealing with UEFA, work with UEFA on, on numerous projects. So that's where we have a, a huge sort of step in stone as well to get, to get that the green light on, on what we need. So um, I do think we have the best people, best consultants dealing with, 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 with UEFA. Fabio, just just regards that 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 sounds really good. The fact that we have connections now, you know, straight to UEFA, which I suppose in the past mm. we have had that with John Delaney, but he didn't really care about the league. Let's be honest. But from a marketing point of view, um, this could be huge. You know, especially when you when you when you're kind of, you know, you're talking about passion and fans and com- like I know that there, there'll always be that kind of thing. Or, oh, will there be trouble at games? There's trouble at, at most games anyway. At every game you go to, even you look at England, it's the same. Um, it's yeah. passion, it's rivalry. You're gonna get that regardless. But from a marketing se- uh, point, do you think that you know we are far from giving it that push that it's needed um, it, from a marketing point of view? Yeah, I think there's a bit of a fair factor there, Paul. With this, safety concerns are always an issue, as you just said. They're an issue in any game. You know, any Robbers Bowls game same thing any any yeah. derby here in Ireland the same same issues and we've seen you no know, issues over the over the years my time in the north as well you know from from, from coming up as as you know a catholic here going down playing in, in Linfield and everything I've never, never I've never had a moment's issue you know going up there and playing for three three and a half years so um not to say that that's that's it's going to be fine when teams are travelling up. Of course, there's going to be concerns in, in, in the likes of the dog and stuff coming up and, and everything else. But um, I really do feel, as a marketing, as a marketing, uh, I suppose, you know, this this could be huge. And capturing everybody's imagination again, getting people, you know, the big crowds back that we used to get. You know, Linfield versus Dundalk. Can you imagine Rovers versus Glen Torrent? Huge, huge, attractive toys. And I think... Um, where we're at at the minute, I don't think it's more of a case do we want this. I think we need it and I think the league needs it and I think the professionals we have here are top professionals and they deserve something like this. Yeah, and and that's that's what I mean. Like he's, I know Gary's going to ask you about the Satanta Cup um, and that was that was a, a great event. I, I thought it was a great spectacle. Um, it was enjoyable yeah. fixtures. I mean, there was trouble but as I say, you're going to get that with, with everything no matter what. I went up to uh, the United... Uh, United Nations Union. Did I say that right, Gary? United Union. United Union. I think Champions Cup. So yeah. So we were obviously up at that up in uh, Windsor Park, and I was walking around with mm. my Irish football fan TV jacket on, um, yeah. with the crests on it, and nobody said anything to me, and everything was fine. And we were sitting. We went down from the media part down to the actual fans, um, and we sat in with them, and nobody said anything to us. There was no trouble. Mm. Yeah, I've had similar experience. So. I won the Irish Cup in, in Windsor Park, you know, with a couple of Catholics on the team. After the game, the Linfield fans having having drinks with them afterwards. And, you know, in their own backyard winning an Irish Cup. So, you know, there you go. And, uh, and I think that's proof proof is there that, you know, tensions are, you know, I think people want to want to see the past, you know, don't, don't want to live in the past. They want to live in the present. And, you know, my my time in the, nor- in the North has been perfect and I have to say I've only only positive things to say about the league up there The only concern I'd have the Fabio is I remember I was actually at the Satanta Cup final in 2007 when you won in, in at Windsor and beat Linfield uh, yeah. the Linfield fans brought the Drogheda fans uh, drinking in the Shankill Road before that game 
and yep. they had a great time party together. I know there's great links between Drogheda and Portadown going back to the Satanta Cup days, and they still yep. go to each other's games. But that was 2007. It was great. Last yep. year, a concern about the United Union one that the Dundalk fans had to be bussed in and totally segregated, terrible, uh, strict security police. The same thing for the Linfield fans coming down to Dundalk. Uh, well, I thought it was overkill in my view. I'm just wondering, and I hope that wouldn't be the case uh, for an All-Ireland League. Yeah, it's similar similar as well, Gary. Um, when we won the Satanta in Windsor, I mean, the Linfield fans clapped us off after the penalty shootout. And after losing on a penalty shootout, you know yourself, it can be very hard, hard to take and a tough one to swallow. So, you know, to clap us off, I thought it showed great, great character from them. It showed great sportsmanship and everything. And, you know... You wouldn't see that in some of the grounds here. You wouldn't see that kind of spirit. So for, for them to clap us off after losing the Satanta on, on, on penalties, I thought was, a, you know, even afterwards, you know, the David Jeffries, who was a real, real, you know, huge figure to, uh, up north. And he was, you know, perfect, perfect loser. And uh, so graceful in defeat, which was um, bodes well going forward for, you know, this is 13 years later. So you'd expect it even to be better now as 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 as, as, as previous. Yeah, Gary, you wanted to ask Fabio about it's just Santa Cup, so feel free. Yeah, so just uh, what's just your experience is playing in it because it's probably the closest thing we've had and the most recent thing to an All Ireland League. And uh, how did you enjoy playing uh, in it? And did you see any issues? Any issues among the players? And no, I, I always enjoyed it. It was a nice break from the league. I think this is a little bit different. You know, people, I suppose, people look at this and think it's. I suppose a watered down version of the Santa Cup in, in some ways, but it's 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 totally not because this you know when when it breaks into the playoff, this is the be all, this is the all the European places, this is you know the key, the top team will eventually play in the Aviva or, or Windsor Park, so it's it's so much more at stake in this. You now the Santa was great for I would say four or five years, three or four years maybe, really really good when the money was was there and. The prestige, I suppose, was there as well, and uh, but it did it did sort of run its course as well because it nearly became a nuisance for for teams traveling and and everything else. When you know the carrot isn't there, that it, it's not worth your while to, to maybe go go to the further stages of the competition. So, but look, that's that's the nature of anything. You know, it has to be, it has to make sense. And usually, if it makes money for a team, it makes sense. And that's the unfortunate side of the game that um you know we all we we all understand, I suppose. Yeah, I think the money, you mentioned the money, and I think that's absolutely crucial. I mean, the prize money at the start of the Satanta Cup, I think it was 2005, I think it was something like half a million uh, euro was at Sterling mm. anyway. It was, a lot of, it was a lot of money for the clubs. And, and gradually it went down. And I think once the money went down, some of the clubs lost interest. A lot of games on a Monday night c caused a problem. So uh, I'm assuming we're aiming for these games to have them at prime time, either, either Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, prime time for the fans and also prime time for TV? Yeah, I mean, you have to hit the, hit the, audience, hit the right audience and you have to hit them at the right times. And I'm, I know Kieran, I know when he does something and if he gets the green light and this and if we get it up off, if he gets it up off the ground, I think this could be, you know, a really special tournament. I think, you know, again, I think going to games... You'd be going out on a day trip on a Saturday, on a Friday. You know, there'd be a real excitement to 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 everything again. It's you know, there's nothing better than a road trip to a to a good game. We all know that. You know, it's an early start, and you know, you're buzzing from from the off. Similar to what they do in England. You know, when they go off to their games, and it takes them maybe three or four hours to get there and stuff, and you're on the buses and trains or or wherever. I think it again. It just adds to that carnival atmosphere to games, and I think certainly that's what that, that's what it will do. And Hopefully, you know, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll be talking about getting ready for for something special. And you know, I, I do see it going that way from um, from all the sort of soundings at the minute. And what um, if in an ideal scenario, when do you think that it, if it is to go ahead, when it will be in, put in place? I'd, I'd say it's it'd have to be sooner rather than later, Paul. I think as as soon as UEFA, the FAI can really really push this as quick as possible because as I, as I said earlier I don't think it's a case of you know 
wanted it. I think they need it for, for, for a viable league going forward. And I think we'll, we'll see it sooner rather than later. And, um, you know, not, obviously not next season, just definitely the season after. Okay, well, we're, we're talking about kind of making strides and, you know, with the league and stuff like that. And obviously the Watch LOI's uh, streaming platform launched yesterday. What's your, your take on it? Because I know, I, I think I've said this to you previously and I, I, I've i been wanting something like this for years and I'm pretty sure you did too. Mm, yeah, I mean, this is very exciting and like, real positive. So everything's positive now again, which is great. We're chatting about possible all in league, the streaming service now, which is Watch League of Ireland. And, you know, for me now, you know, who's working a lot of shift work and stuff like that, um, it's great. You know, I can I can tune into my phone now and watch, and watch, watch games. So, and for all these all those League of Ireland nuts around the country, I think it's 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 a huge boost and for the league in general. And the RTE and, and the FEI deserve deserve great credit. You know, the price point as well on it was fantastic. I think um it'll cost you what a euro a game or something, I think if you, if you, if you break it all down. So um fourth less, division fans as euro. well. Yeah. So, you know, brilliant. I mean, what would you get for a euro these days, you know? Yeah, but and this, but it's not only that. It's it can be viewed all over the world. So you pay sixty nine euro. Yeah, you can watch it in Australia, Canada, America, and then all over Europe and the rest of the world if you want. You, know, you pay that sixty nine euro. That's your pass for the for, for the season then. Yeah, and and you know that brings an, another avenue into your, into your, you know you get fans from different different things. You get you know obviously betting companies. All this you know adds to you know, marketing of the league and, you know, gets it out there and, and you know, it's all positive, I think, because, um, you know, I, you know, you'd be surprised how, how popular different leagues are around the world and we've got to put ourselves out there first and foremost to, to, um, to, to, to see how, uh, how we can grow and how, how quick we can grow. I suppose it's better late than never. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, Gary, have you anything to, to touch on there before we left? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to touch on you're wearing a Liverpool top, and it's actually um, <laughs> classic from because Irish. There are so many football fans in this country, and mm. the Premier League, in particular Liverpool and Manchester United, are just so huge. And yeah. is it marketing? Is it hype? I mean, the numbers of people that go to Old Trafford and Anfield again once this virus is gone. Uh, mm. Is that something you think the All Ireland League is going to do? It's going to bring that hype, that marketing, that passion. And hopefully get those people also going to games on this island. Yeah, I think you know when you've got a passion for sport, you know you, you, it's there in you, you know. So, but when you've got a passion for sport and you don't see enough games on TV and stuff like that, you're you're not going to get behind stuff. So, a lot of people that are in, into the League of Ireland but don't see it that much will 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 obviously just won't get behind it. But if we market it properly, the games are on billboards. Etc. You know, there's more paper. There's more. There's more talk about it in the papers. Every everywhere else. You know, then it starts to snowball very, very, very quickly. And I think obviously with a Liverpool top, you know, I, like probably Paul with Everton, you grow up and all you see is Liverpool winning things. And when I grew up, I was I think the last time they won. I like to know nine, Everton or... didn't win anything. <laughs> yeah, the FA Cup in eighty. What was it? Ninety five. I, mean, I, I wasn't watching football then, unfortunately. <laughs> My dad Paul, was at it though. Paul Roy outscored the winner. That's the one. Yeah, um, I was watching that one actually. Yeah, I'm showing me age now, always. But uh, yeah, no. So you know, it is marketing. You're right, Gary. You know, and and that's what was in our faces as kids. And and you know, I remember the only jerseys I had when I was seven or eight was the Crown Paint Liverpool jerseys, and me, me, me and the brother. So yeah, that that sticks with you and. Obviously, being a League of Ireland nut as well because of, of history in the league, and I, you know, I love the league, and we want to grow our own league. But again, if you if I wasn't growing up in the league, I, I probably wouldn't be into it because I don't see enough of it about, and I don't see enough talk about, it, I don't see enough in the papers, and you know, I don't hear people talking about. It. I had a great day out on, on Saturday in the Pats game. We went for points before the game. Blah blah. blah. You, you don't see that because facilities don't allow it in most in most grounds, and it's not a family occasion in most grounds, and etc. I think that's a good point that you make there because when I used to go to games as a kid, we used to go to all the Shells games. It was my dad, my uncle, my cousin, my brother. Mm. And then we'd all bring our friends. Like, so yeah. all of our friends were coming. So all our friends were all Shells fans going up. It obviously helped the Shells were doing well at the time, but we were brought into it from my granda. So it was a, a huge family occasion for us. 
Um, mm. But you, you touch on it there. It, it it can be a big family day out. And I see lots more, especially since we started the channel, we see lots more people who kind of were into the league, stopped kind of going, but then start having kids. And now they bring their kids to the games because before yeah. probably on a Friday night, that would have been their night out, if you get me. But now they can bring their family as something to do on a Friday. And then their kid might be playing out football on a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah. So they want that football kind of to, to put them in the mood then for the game, you know? Mm, I think so. And I think the times as well over here, you know, don't suit family occasions. I think you got some great tasty toys on Friday night, you know, four to eight. You know, kids are at the finish in a week of school. You, you probably want to bring two of your kids to the game. But, um, you know, they're getting home at half ten, eleven o'clock. You might be up and draw with them or the dark and getting home at twelve, one o'clock in the morning. That's that's not feasible. That's that you cannot sustain and you you know, that will not catch on ever. So that's the other the other sort of thing that sticks sticks for me that um and I've said this, you know, the family atmosphere, the the big the family match atmosphere the, you know, that you wanna connect with. We just don't have it at the minute, and I think um, until you start getting games, and Kieran has talked about this with the all and League, you want games six, five o'clock Saturday evenings, you know, peak times, families can get to the games, families can go out for dinner before or after, blah, 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 and, you know, that's how you attract people. You give people what they want, basically. Yeah, I, I see. I see as well. You, you're talking about the kickoff times. I, I'm actually older than you, Fabio, and my tradition has always been going on a Sunday afternoon to to League of Ireland games. And I know the yeah. Irish League yeah. have a very strong 3 p.m. Saturday traditional going back since yeah. well, forever. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a possibility of, of Sunday football? Um, I, I know Linfield are typically normally very much against it, and there's very little Sunday football played up north. Mm, yeah, yeah, well. I yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I've never played here yeah, up north. They're completely against it. Sunday is a day of praying. I'd like to say, but I, I think it's more drinking up there. You know, but uh, you know that's that's how they do it up there. I think you know the, the Friday, even a little bit earlier. You know, your six o'clock would work. I think you know six o'clock Friday, Saturday five o'clock, six o'clock. You know, times where you know it just it's common sense. You know, it's we're not it's not a magic formula we're coming up with here. It's just times that families can get to the game in an easy manner and get home without being driving at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning home from, from places where, you know, you could be tired and you could be having a long week's work and driving out from uh, with kids and cars and stuff like that. It's it's it's, it's not, you know, it's it certainly doesn't help them. Well, I think and how would you... I think as well, though, like, you, you did say 5 or 6 on a Friday. That could be difficult for people who are doing 9 to 5 or whatever they mm. use to do shift work. So it could be yeah. difficult for them as well. Maybe changing the day might, might suit better or kind of looking at the logistics of what suits best and not having all the games, say, on a Friday and maybe move, spread them out might be a, yeah. A, yeah. A, another thing to look at. I think so, yeah. You know, as I said, we're not gonna get, you're not going to keep everybody happy, but certainly try and tweak it to get more people on board with going to games. Yeah, Gary, what were you going to say there? Me to yeah, around. just one of the things, the streaming service, and I know this is necessity, all the games seem to be staggered, so there's very few games on at the same time. I, I'm just wondering, with a, uh, hopefully a great TV contract for the All-Ireland League, would you have to have a similar situation that you would have games at different times? As you say, maybe 6 o'clock Friday, 8 o'clock Friday, two or three times on a Saturday. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. I mean, is that an option? Yeah, I think so. I think um, you know, all will be revealed. I think if they if they go ahead with it, but um, I certainly think that has to be the way, Gary. I mean, there will have to be a huge sort of plan going into structure around what game times and and peak times and you know, Kieran, I know covers covers all ground and leaves no stone unturned when it when it when it comes to um, market research and and when games should be played and when you get most audiences to to watch the game. So. I'm sure that won't be an issue. Because it frustrates me, actually, because I, I go to a game, nearly all our games are on a Friday night, and you're at a game, and then there's a live TV game. So a huge proportion of a potential audience can't watch the live TV game because they're at another game. And uh, Yeah, I completely I think... agree with you. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I, it annoyed me for years. And, you know, I've been, you know, harping on about this for years with the times of games and, and, and the day of games, the Friday night, etc., the, the later kickoffs, and particularly in winter as well. You know, fair enough in the summer you have a half seven game and it's sunny out and everything else. You know, come closer to the winter when the season's coming to an end, you got dark nights, really cold, 
and you know you're sitting in the the stand there. It's you know you got your eight year old which he's freezing cold. You know it's it's it's, not, it's certainly you know it's not a good um sort of atmosphere and it's not not atmospheres. It's not a good experience for the for the child, I suppose. And he will drift away from that then, or he or she, and they will end up not going to the games because of that experience. I think as well, it, it's something that. You know, I, I think the league's been good on this. We're starting to kind of get schoolboy teams in um, on nights when we're playing games, and then they becoming fans that way. And it's been that's been a clever way of getting in. But we need to find mm. kind of more things like that. That's a kind of like a little bit of a niche where where people will get I don't know clubs get players going into schools, and then you know from mm. that then the, te- the the their team get to go in and play a half time in games and then that way they become fans because they played on the pitch or it was just yeah, small excellent. small things as a kid mm. to set your mm. imagination, you know? Yeah, well I think Bowles have done that brilliantly over the last couple of years. Yeah. I've been in Daily Mount and you yeah. know, you see tons of kids and all smiling and, you know, the real real uh, game day experience, you know, you can see they have it and the players meet them after the games. As you said, Ball, simple things, but simple things that go a long, long way. And um, you know, they're doing huge huge things in, in the daily mail and i really thought they made great progress in a, in a marketing capacity over over the last couple of years and i think other clubs should certainly follow suit with, with, with what they're doing but um still you know it's a scratching the surface in a, in a sense that so much more we, we could do and bring the league forward and i think the all in the league um, offers that yeah i think it's a fear of change kind of with older people they just they, they, they kind of fear any sort of like the way Social media is your number one marketing tool, and it should be used so much more for mm. clubs. For like you see, at the start of season, we always get really good intros to the season or kind of build ups to the season from clubs. Mm. We'd like to see more of that, wouldn't you? I know I would. Yeah, you know, a lot of clubs. I see Drogheda United. You know, just going to give you an example. Have uh, somebody doing all the social media for the last probably year and a half, and it's fantastic. Anytime I open my phone, something pops up. Instagram, something pops up, draw and that's exactly what you want. But you know, these people need to be paid as well. You know, you got social media probably experts here that you know have studied in, in in marketing and stuff. But you know, most clubs will probably have somebody that's not probably as savvy as someone else, and they won't have to. They're usually you know, volunteers. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, I think draw have put a bit of a bit of money into it, and um, you can see the difference. And you know, that's. You know, with the all Ireland League, with the money that brings from 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 TV, everything else, that will give you the money to do these. It will give you the tools to be able to add to these things, and then that's how you know you start to grow and grow. And you know, that's that's the idea, I suppose, with this. That um, you start at this, and then in a couple of years' time, you know, you you see where you're at now. Because at the minute, we're just plodding along and and going nowhere. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think. We'll have to kind of just wait and see what happens now in the next kind of couple of weeks. I suppose it, in, in many ways it's exciting times to look forward to. Yeah, you know, and, and look for, as I said, yeah, I think it's a really positive chat we're having this morning. You know, a couple of weeks ago we could have sat here talking about doom and gloom and the COVID-19, yeah. you know. So we are, we, we we're starting to see the, 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 the wood through the trees, really, or the, the sun through the trees, if you like. And then we're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel with a bit of luck. And I think... You know, if this plan really, really gets thought about seriously and not just one of these where, oh, it's a great idea, but no, nah, we'll stick where we are type of mentality. And I don't think we'll, we'll end up going anywhere with with that mentality. Yeah, well, listen, Fabio, it's been great having you on and uh, hopefully we can catch up soon when hopefully this is given the green light now in a couple of weeks. Gary, as always, thanks very much. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having us on, buddy. Uh, nice to meet you, Gary. Top man. Yeah, thanks, Fabio. Thanks, Paul.